Hello, this is Clem McDonald and continuing the Visual Basics series. In this tutorial, we're going to look at decision making structures and more specifically the if and if and the select case structures. So let's get started. So in order to expedite time here, what I've done is I've set up a basic form here and I haven't done much here, but you can see here that I have a label. I have a list box here, which I've called the list box LBX colors and I've used a collection just to add seven different colors to the box okay and then this is just a text box and they I've set the multi-line property for the text box to true allowing me to make it a big square I'm not gonna put anything in the text box but I just want to um, make sure that it is uh, big and I'm gonna I called that one txt tester I've also added a second list box here and this looks list box is called LBX numbers and then a label here just to put some uh, output into and that label is called LBO message. So that's all I've done. So what I want to do is I want to look at, okay, what did I select in a list box and then make a decision based on what was selected. So I'm going to create an event for the selected index changed on this um, list box. So if I double click on it, in my code there you can see that it's created a LBX color selected index changed. So we're going to make two different ways in order to make a decision. So the first one we're going to use an if structure for. Okay. Now I've pre-made some code so I can copy and paste it in to make things go a little faster, but I'll start it off here. So we can say if me.lbx colors dot text dot to upper okay equals red then I can do some stuff now red isn't the only option so I want to have more options so I can use what I can use the structure in the middle which is called an else if and I can take this text that I have here and copy and paste it here and change that to blue okay the reason I use to upper here is that way I get rid of case sensitivity. So if I accidentally used um, incorrect case, it won't matter anymore because I've used to upper. And nobody's going to see the upper version of it. That's just in the code. So I can go ahead and create one for each of my colors. If I bring my form design up and go to new vertical tab, you can see that I can see uh, all the colors at the same time. So red, blue, green, oh, to upper. Green. I'm going to put caps lock on here to make sure I type it in. Yellow, gold, <coughs> cyan, and orange. And that's pretty straightforward. I should probably have an else in here. And what an else is, is a catch-all. So if nothing happens, then the catch-all will do something different. And what I'm particularly going to do in this case is just for fun, I'm going to change the background color of the text box. So me.txt tester dot background color is equal to color dot red. Okay? Like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line here and put it into each one of the areas here. And then just change the color to blue. And each of these colors are a preset color in the system. You can you can set RGB colors and do all kinds of other things with it. Um, uh, that's for you to discover on your own. But for now, we're just going to set this up. And if none of those colors appear to work right, we're going to set it to black. Okay? And black means, oops, something went wrong, basically. So let's run this and see what happens. So we've got our LBX selected change. We've got our if structure here. And we've got all kinds of stuff in here. Now, this isn't the best way to do this. And before you write comments and say, hey, there's way better ways to do this. This is meant for a beginner to see what an if structure is. So just a good idea of a way you can use an if structure. So let's go ahead and, and run the project. Up comes the project and as I click on each particular item, you can see that the background color of the text changes. And that's showing us that that event is running. It's going ahead and using an if structure and based on what I've clicked on, it is changing the background color of the text. Now there's more than one way to do that. So just to show you the second way to do this, I'm going to create a select uh, case here. So select 
case. Now a select case allows you to choose one object and then what all the answers are going to be. So my object is going to be me.lbxcolor.text to upper. Okay. So whatever that text is. And then the cases are going to be red. Okay. And then in this case I can go me.txt tester dot back color equals color dot red. Okay. And as I've got that first case there, I can copy that six more times and change this to blue, green, yellow, gold, cyan, and orange. And again, we can change these. It sh should go fairly quickly. Um, you can use IntelliSense here to oh, to quickly get them to work. Um, okay, so there we go. And just so we know the if structure is not going to work, I'll comment that if structure out. So that's all been commented out. So inside this. Uh, subroutine here you can see that this is the only thing that's running in there so let's run this again and when we run it as you can see it still works and the select case works the same as the if structure here so the point here is that there's two different ways to do it and I, at this point we're not ready to say okay this one's better than this one or this one's better than that one or whatever in this case I'm just showing you there's two different ways to do it and either one is as good as the other right now the select case obviously is less text at this point, um, so and that needs a little cleaner, so a little easier to read. And I would probably choose that if, if I was writing this application. Uh, however, there are better ways to do this, which you'll find in more advanced courses. Um, okay, so let's go on to the second part of the tutorial, which is we're going to look at this. And the idea behind this part of the tutorial, I'll shrink up my subroutine here. This part of the tutorial is to look at nesting this information. So putting an if inside an if or a select case inside an if and etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on an item in this list box and you're going to update this label to say something. So let's go ahead and double click on this uh, list box so we get the selected index change item here and we're going to say let's check if we clicked on a numeric number first. So we're going to say if is numeric me dot lbx numbers dot text then okay so if it's numeric we're gonna do something and if it's not numeric we're gonna do something else so we can just put an else in there so now as we now know that it's num uh, it's numeric we know we've probably clicked on the one through the six so let's be creative here and say let's choose if it's odd or it's even so we're going to have a little bit of a math function in here, which is a little bit beyond where we are at the tutorial at this point, but I'll show it to you anyways. So we're going to say if round, oops, sorry, math.round, the number, so we actually have to convert this to a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, sorry, I'm going to say dimension my number as decimal equals C decimal, so I'm going to convert it to a decimal, me.lbx numbers dot text. All right. Now this is only going to run if it's numeric, so that shouldn't cause um, a problem at this point. Uh, yes, I should have some data validation stuff in there, but because I've already done it as numeric, it shouldn't be, so we're going to ignore that for now. So if math dot round, my number divided by two, okay, equals my number divided by two. Okay, and I'm actually going to put a D after this too. That means that's a decimal. So what it is is that if the number is divided by two, and I've rounded it, and that's equal to the number divided by two, that means it's an even number. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, message box, or sorry, not message box. Me dot lbl message dot text equals the even number is and my number dot two string. Okay? And so that converts that decimal number to a string. Alright? And if it's not that, I can take this message and say, if me message, say the odd number. Now I'm going to capitalize the even so it stands up. Okay? 
So you can see very quickly in there, we've created an if inside an if. Now, through my typing, I messed up my end if and end, so I'll just add that back in. So I've got my if and my else. So if it's not numeric here, okay, it's going to run down here. So what I want to do now is I say, okay, I've clicked on 7, 8, 9, or 10. So I want to write something different. So let's say select case. Uh, me dot lbx numbers dot text dot to upper okay case seven case eight case nine and case ten okay now I'm going to say me dot lbl message dot text equals the text number is 7. We'll copy that, paste, paste, paste. And I always want to have a case else in here, just in case. So we're going to do a message box there. So this is going to be an 8. This is going to be a 9. This is going to be a 10. And this is going to be, oops, something went wrong. Okay. So there we go. So if you look at this quickly, we've got an if, we've got an if inside of an if, and we've also got a select case inside of an if. So we're nesting our decision-making structures. So quickly, if we run this, let's see if it works. So we run this, up comes our form, we'll click on two, the even number is two, three, the odd number is three. So the odd even thing seems to be working nicely and the number's working. Now when we click on seven, oh, the text number is seven. So our structure is working nicely. So you can nest these structures as well. Just a last word, be cautious not to go two levels deep with your, too many levels deep with your nesting. That just adds complexity. And if you have to go too many levels deep, there's probably a better way to do it and you should rethink your structure. Alright, enjoy. Thank you.